Hey everybody. We got Manny Kraskow. See the home over here. <laughs> and uh, we're in Yellowstone National Park now. We're not out in the wilds because we had to go somewhere to get some signal. So we're in Mammoth, which obviously there's a lot of cars going through. But if you look over here, we got some bison right over here. And so we thought we'd stop and do some sketching and talk with you guys and show you what we're doing. This is uh, this is something we try to do at least a couple times a year when we can get out into the wild and, and just get all of our reference and draw from life and just get away from the studio for a little while and sit here and sketch. And it just keeps us really well-rounded. And uh, let's just show what these guys have been doing. What are you drawing, Peter? We got that buffalo up there, but the difficult thing is, of course, they're not going to stay still. So we're trying to move as quick as we can, but really use a lot of our own kind of muscle memory and visual memory that we have, even though the animal's in front of us, still using our experience of understanding what they look like. But we can keep drawing and not have to always stare, essentially. So constant back and forth, but still having fun. <laughs> What about you, Manny? Anything to add? Same thing. This is muscle memory. Sketching. Uh, you can see it's one sketch to another. Oh, that's not a that's not a buffalo, but it is a buffalo. Quick sketches. That's a puma from a couple of days ago, but you got the babies moving around. Cute. They were milk drunk. Yeah. <laughs> they're all falling asleep out in the grass. Now they're getting up and around. But yeah, they've been feeding on their mamas, so they're all milk drunk. Now, we were lucky this morning with the uh, grizzlies. Oh, man. That was a lot of fun. We had a couple of grizzlies. I got a couple of sketches, actually. Where are they? I wanted to see them, actually, too. They weren't that great. They were just really quick. Uh, uh, but, fantastic. Awesome. But, uh, we got one right there. There's, uh, the mama grizzly out there with their two, uh, their yearling cubs, right? They're yep. a couple years old. Yep. And so they're out digging for roots and all kinds of stuff. And um, tubers. Tubers. So we got tons of video, tons of photographs. We got some sketches in. Uh, all kinds of great stuff. So here we are. That's, so there they are. Yeah, there's the bears. And uh, that was another one I started, but then we left. We got real yucky, lucky yesterday. What did we see and yesterday? Yucky. We got yucky. <laughs> <laughs> no, we came up on a, we came up, uh, uh, we were in Lamar Valley and came up on a, we are like in the park for two hours. Our first two hours here, we came up on a wolf on a bison kill. Or at least a bison carcass. I don't know if it was a bison kill. Uh, so he may have been scavenging. But uh, uh, it was amazing. So we got some sketches. Actually, I got a sketch of that. Too. Where is it? That's what I was trying to queue up. Yeah. Right here. And, you know, I was, we were a long ways away. So about 150 yards away. So this is what I, that's what I saw. So we were a long ways away. It was hard to get any details, but Dustin was able to get some amazing shots pulling in with his 600 millimeter lens. And uh, that was super cool. And we're actually, we're going to head out there. Uh, next. Next. We're gonna go back out to the same area. And, um, but we thought we'd stop here and try to connect with you guys and show you what we're doing and let you know, cause we, we didn't do our live stream today. So we thought, let's try to squeeze one and see if we can get enough signal in. And I guess we're getting enough signal. Is it working? Yeah, hey, we got about a hundred people watching right now. Hey, right on. Yeah, yes. All right, hey guys. <laughs> <laughs> we got the, the babies drinking milk in a magpie oh. on top of the... Tool-wise, in the watercolor book, this is a multi-drawing book, Holbein. What pen are you using? Uh, this is a Kuretake. Uh, I gave one to Aaron and Nani. They're using it too. This is just the um, waterproof ink, carbon platinum ink. So with the marker, it won't run, won't bleed, holds really well. So yeah, quick, quick sketching glides on top of the paper but they're using a bit something that's smoother right now i have a bit more tooth to mine so it has a bit more grip yeah so um, but it, i mean these are all sketches i did with the pen it's an awesome pen i love it i'm gonna fill i filled up that page now they're kind of giving us butt shots 
Yes. That's all right. A lot of our sketches like start this way, loose, and then we kind of finish up, and then we'll maybe like get in the car, and then we'll start to add more to it. So I'd start to, you know, start to ink in, hatch away, add more details. Even though I don't see the animal in front of me, I can use information again from muscle memory that we just talked about to fill in the rest of the gaps. So a lot of our sketches on location while we're sketching is usually kept rough, loose, and light like this. So it's about producing as much as we can and finishing later. And the nice thing about using a marker is that there's no commitment. So you lay down whatever lines you got, and you don't commit to anything. So whatever you place is what's going to be there for momentarily until they move. And then once they move, you can go along with whatever the animal's moving. But any of these lines, nothing is committed. And right now, the babies are milking. I don't know if you can get them, Nick or not. But... So here, we just started a new one. You can, and like Manny was saying, you know, when you draw with pen, you got to get in there and commit. And so I like to roughly just hit different areas and lay it in like so. And, and this is a funky angle, too. So it really forces you to think about the anatomy. And if you don't know the anatomy, a lot of people ask, well, how do you go out there and, and just draw? Well, you, gotta, you do need to know the anatomy before you start. It, it helps. You have to know a little bit about that, what, what it is that you're drawing. And so here, there she goes. She just turned her head just right. So I'm just going to throw her head right here. We were hoping to get signal out in the middle of the park, but it just hasn't happened. Yeah, there's just no signal here. So you can see just very quickly, I got that silhouette of her head. Or she just flipped her tail up. And a lot of times, you know, I'm not looking to do lots of detail, so I'm just, I like that she just had a silhouette for a head. So that's what I'm gonna draw. And I do know there's a darker area for her eye. We're gonna be out here for four, four more days. This funky angle really push you. And the, the purpose for doing stuff like this is not to create beautiful drawings. You know, a lot, sometimes you get some neat drawings out of them, but it's really when you're sitting here forced to look at your subject matter from life, you're going to pick up a lot of things that you won't pick up from photographs. So that when you do go back and, you, and if you want to go back into the studio and you want to work from your reference, then you've got that experience of having already drawn from life and picked up elements that you wouldn't pick up if you just photographed and gone back to the studio. For me, that really solidifies visual memory. Yes. It's the other experiences like the sounds, the smells, the, the people, the conversations that we can have while we're drawing that adds to what we're seeing too. So in memory, even sometimes when we smell something, we kind of go back trigger. to that moment, that trigger. A little trigger. Yeah, so when we only look at... Sorry about that, it was my breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> if we only look at photo references online, it's just a, a single experience. So it doesn't really lock in for me. Why do you guys like coming this time of year? Why do we come this time of year? Mm -hmm. uh, babies, Someone. Yeah, maybe every, uh, bears are coming out of hibernation, which is not a true hibernation, it's a torpor, but they're coming out and it's a good time. So hoping we're hoping to get to Jackson in the next couple of days because 399 is out there. It's a day of famous, I think she's 24, 20, either 24 or 27. I don't know why those numbers come to my mind, but she's got four cubs and all four of her cubs have, uh, and she's known for being a really good mother. She's a good mother, yeah. Someone just said, oh, snap, Peter Hahn is there. He's a beast. <laughs> so here we go with a quick. Okay. We all do quick sketches. Lisa, Lisa, Nicole, yeah. Lisa, why don't you go over here so you get up? This idea of perfection thing. doesn't exist. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you gotta move, adapt, and just play with it. 
And yeah. what people don't realize is, so we're in the town of Mammoth, and this is a little town in the middle of Yellowstone for people who aren't familiar with it. Yeah. And wild animals just wand right into the town. There's elk in here, bison all the time. And we're going to be mindful about their space and that kind of thing. We don't know how long we're going to stream today because it's not the same as being in the studio, but... Maybe we can stream from the, from the room and do some drawing too, huh? Yeah, that I was thinking would be a lot of fun when we get back tonight. Yep. Probably do that. So for those of you watching now, Stay tuned, we might do a stream later on this evening. Aaron is using mind, po mind powers to make the animals pose. That's right. <laughs> well, that's the thing is, if the animal's holding a certain pose that we don't like, I can even try to move the pose myself in the drawing mm -hmm. to make it better more, and more aesthetic on the sketch. So I'm not locked into what I'm seeing. I'm always moving with it, adapting to it. Exactly. Using it the way I want to. And what I'll do a lot of times too is I'll look up and then look away really fast and it'll leave a flash of a pose on my eye. Oh, it's yeah. funny. So I, I, I do a blink. Yeah, the blink. I do Same a thing. blink where like a kind of look at what I am see, see my subject kind of blink and then it stays and then I'm, I'm trying to jot it down. Yep. And, yep. And then, and then you use your anatomy knowledge to fill it in. Mm -hmm. Uh, someone is asking to repeat the name of the pens again. What are these? Uh, Kuditake. Kuditake. This is a brand. Do you remember the name of the pen? It's just the Kuditake refillable pen. Refillable they pens. have a line now of refillable ones with different type nibs. This one, I think, is a 0.3. Yeah. And yeah. then they have a chisel tip. They have a broader tip as well. So you filled your own ink in them, right? Did, Peter? Yeah. Yep. This is Amber, too. Another artist joining us. Hi, guys. <laughs> Dustin, say hello. We got, we got Dustin out here, How's photographing. And the wildlife out here is absolutely beautiful. The gang is amazing pictures out here. Can't wait to show you all out there. So I was like, whoa, that's Dustin right there in person. <laughs> and I'm throwing some Copic marker over the top. And once again, it's just going really loose. Yeah, that's all. kind of collaborative sketching is something I think all art should experience. I mean, now that we're in quarantine or have been in quarantine, it's been kind of hard for people to connect. And just being online can be, you know, very isolating. And I think this kind of building of socializing and networking, but also just building friends is a huge part of growing as an artist. So we think of only just technique and tools and pens, but I think it's just about connecting too. So, yeah. Excited to have everybody back out again. This is the first time we're doing this. It's been yeah. over a year. Since, yeah, so. since COVID started. Yeah. I'm just, lucky that I live out here, so I come out here quite a bit. Yeah. So, but it's not just being the Lone Ranger. This is a great pose right here, the one where she's laying down. I don't know if you'll be able to see any of them, but... You can sort of see them. And sort of? Yeah, hold your finger just above the hand, just above the screen. That might, yeah, that might be. How's that? Yeah, that's cool. There we go. We can see that pretty good little reflection, but... Can you see how sharp that yep, is right there? Little, you little see reflection, it? reflection, but... Yeah. Let's see if I move it a little closer. Oop. There we go. Right there, yeah. There's a baby calf. Ran out with them with the mama. I got some some amazing earlier with the uh, with the two calf together. Oh, and also got this. Uh, can't remember what the name of this bird is. Sorry for the shaky camera, guys. I'm sorry. Trying to balance. How do you want the styling? Styling. Yeah. Oh, 
Starling. Starling. I think somebody said that this one here is a it's a it's black and white. I think it's a magpie. magpie yeah. yeah. That's a magpie, yeah. Yep. So black and white ones brought it around yet, so. Yeah. So it's been getting amazing shots. Yeah. All of us have our own camera gear too, so we draw and then we get as much as we can and then maybe even if we really want a shot to push later on, then we take a photograph. Yep. But our goal out here, you know, someone asked us, you know, asked me, is this, a, are these work trips? Yes, these are work trips. Do we enjoy them? Yeah, we love them. But they're, they're first and foremost work trips. We get out here to just, you know, to hone our skills, but also gather the material that we're going to use for the rest of the year. Have you seen any pronghorns today? Uh, we did see some pronghorns earlier in the day. They were way up on the side of the mountain on the side of the hill. So we weren't able to really get any good shots. But we have seen pronghorn. We've seen, so far we've seen grizzlies, a mama and the two cubs like we talked about. A lot of, lot of bison. <coughs> the lone wolf. Saw the lone wolf. We've seen a bunch of mule deer, uh, some elk, uh, ground squirrels. Lots of ground squirrels. <laughs> Lots of ground squirrels. <laughs> Saw a coyote. Yeah, oh yeah. And the coyote was uh, kind of making off with some of the, the wolf's kill. So he he was uh, he was looking over his shoulder the whole time. Let's see, anybody got any questions? It's, it's hard to get uh yeah can imagine but this is cool now we've got to draw a bit more for those that don't know peter can actually draw both left and right-handed it's insane <laughs> i'm trying to draw with only my teeth now too. <laughs> <laughs> What sketchbooks is everybody using? Manny writes right. the brown tone a lot. Yeah, I do. I and this is just something that I picked up at a at a crazy store that not there's no brand to it at all whatsoever. It's just some a random book of paper. Brand, yeah, and on these, I feel really comfortable that uh, it's not very expensive, and I can just do these quick, quick kind of try brush things out. And you showed yours earlier. What was it? This is that uh, multi drawing book. Sure. Oh, Holbein. Like but uh, oh, watercolor paper. This is just observation, uh, drawing cars earlier. Uh, it's from the bears. And just, and this is, this, all these pages are just from this trip right now. So this is a fresh new book. And then Aaron, what sketchbook are you using? I'm using that Strathmore Gray Tone. I love this. I love this, you know, the Strathmore Gray Tone because you can go in and you can go dark with it like I'm doing here. Or I can, you know, if I want to, I can put some light tone on here. Let's say I want to get this, uh, I want to get this bison to pop out. I can come in and come in with a white tone and just create a background. And that bison just pops right off the page in some of these negative spaces or there might be areas that you know are, are are white and so you can pull the lights out and you can push your darks really dark as well so you get a really great effect here seen any other birds other than magpie osprey harlequin ducks Harlequin ducks. Yeah. You saw the harlequin ducks? Red tails. I did say harlequin. I said it by accident. Red tail hawks. Thanks for calling me out on that. It was great. <laughs> so I can go along here. Let's say I want to create some highlights on some of the hide here. I love that texture. Yeah. 
So, have you run into Jay Autobahn Woodlore? No. John Autobahn. <laughs> yeah. Is that, haven't they been dead a long time? Yeah, like since the 1700s. <laughs> <laughs> Someone just said, and then Old Faithful erupts and kills everybody at the end of the stream. <laughs> we did watch Old Faithful erupt about three hours ago. Yeah. 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 It's quite nice. Got some video of that. Uh, Amber, you want to show your drawing? Sure. Very nice. How do you draw animals that run away quick? Is it just having your visual library or? Yes, yes exactly. that's exactly what it is. You get a, a, a sense of the gesture of them running yeah. and then you just fill it in with your visual library. Yeah. It really is that. That gesture, he's talking about the line, the movement, it can literally just be a stick figure. I mean, it starts with a circle to a gesture in the back to a couple of limbs. And then I don't have to look at it anymore. From there, the pose is already set. Then it's just filling in the form, the three dimensions and surface textures and whatnot. And that's all visual memory. So this morning, this is the same bison moving on me. Yeah. So, so it's just really quick, fast. Yeah. Went from that to that. I mean, you really do have sex. Yeah. 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 But just moving fast is not going to get you anywhere. You really do have to kind of think about what it is you're going to do at first. I tried to pre-strategize before. I think about visualizing in my head as I'm watching, and then I act on it. I don't try to think while I'm doing it. This will kind of stumble up a little bit. Someone just said, you guys are like hunters, but with pencils. It's exactly like we're doing. <laughs> with cameras. And yeah. But yeah, that's exactly. And that, that's the, uh, that's the bison. Sounds of nature. Beep, beep, Sounds beep, beep. Right? <laughs> but from here, we're going to head over to Lamar Valley. Lamar Valley. And there, we'll hopefully get away from people. And then we'll hopefully gather tonight and draw. Yeah. Stretch. That'll be fun. It's always fun. <laughs> like uh, and that one, that was a completely different kind of session because we'll pull together our sketches that we did from life, um, but then we'll also pull together the photographs and everything, and we sit down and kind of do these more refined, kind of uh, anatomically more accurate images and that sort of thing. Are you worried about the bison's charging at all? No, no, yeah. Look at them; they're all relaxing. So they'll, they'll let you know. Usually, the tail will go straight up. Uh, yeah, we're, we're very careful to pay attention to their body language. Alright. Yeah. You guys want to wrap it? Yeah, let's yeah, go ahead and wrap it up. We're going we're gonna to head on over to Lamar Valley, which is uh, kind of east of here. And uh, But yeah, like Manny said, we're going to get together tonight afterwards. And uh, look at our photographs, dissect them. Yeah, and sit in the hotel things. room and, and we'll go over again with you guys. Yeah. See you guys. Join us. We should see you. See ya. Bye. Lindsay's Bye. down there.